morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. Although I am not in the wilderness today, I am going live from Mountain Ben's house. Uh, yesterday, I spent the day on the road, actually 13 hours of my day on the road yesterday. Good morning, Miss Shelley. I decided to do this. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Um, yeah, I spent 13 hours on the road yesterday. It was quite a crazy, crazy day. It was extremely windy, and I did end up having problems with our truck, and uh, it was it was quite something. But the trip was amazing in the regard that it had such great intention. Uh, took the mountain boy to school, and uh, he is settled in, and uh, really excited. Made some friends. His roommate was really cool. So um, I was extremely excited after a week of, Mom, I'm really gonna miss you and I can't believe it's going so fast and I can't believe it's a day from now and I can't believe you're taking me to school today, to a half-hearted hug, I love you, and off he ran. And I just kind of sat there a little dumbfounded, but at the same time, I chuckled to myself and I was really excited because there was no need to be emotional. He was that comfortable with his school and that comfortable in his surroundings and in his own skin that he just went off and he's on his own. So that's a whole new feeling uh, for the first time in 23 years. I can, I don't have to care for anybody. It's a weird feeling, but at the same time, it makes me wonder and, and be very inspired to see what I am capable of now focusing on my adventures and my writing and my creative arts and all that other good stuff so it's a whole new it's a whole new world and the mountain man and I are now empty nesters so it's a whole new adventure good morning miss Betty Horn now that makes my day I hope you are doing well sweet friend I know, isn't that awesome? Shelley says that's so awesome for Austin. I am just, I'm just so excited. Um, for those of you that are just chiming in and haven't heard, the Mountain Boy is um, is at Job Corps in Washington um, for automotive, diesel, and heavy equipment repair, as well as uh, heavy equipment operations. So he will have the opportunity to participate in all three of those fields. The one that he's really anxious about is the diesel and the big equipment where we are located. That is a huge, huge uh, opportunity for him. Uh, the mechanics are very sought after. So really, really excited about that for him. And it's just, it's just so amazing. And the topic of today, we have some other comments here. Good morning, Miss Tammy. Good morning, good morning. Miss Tammy has lots of snow and so does Kelly, I'm not sure if Kelly jumped on or not, but they are in Montana and are getting lots of snow, very cold temperatures. It's actually really cold here. Um, I'm in, I am in Washington also. I couldn't make the whole trek last night, so um, Mountain Ben was staying at our house for, gosh, probably almost two years. Um, so he is now farming in Washington and the reason I'm still here and not on the road and doing my live on the road is because this young man who is now farming with family in Washington has blessed me and is going to bless me with a whole pickup truck load of potatoes. That's just awesome. My, my man is a meat and potato kind of guy. One of the very few foods I can eat without getting sick is potatoes. So um, we will have potatoes coming out of our ears and can have potatoes of all sorts all winter long and I'm going to we'll put some in a crate in our food room and I'm going to be canning and dehydrating uh, what doesn't fit in the crate so it will probably be a week-long project next week for me to be doing that because this week tomorrow starts our elk season and our hunting season which I am extremely excited to get out for Oh, Tammy says, Kelly has a lot more than we do as far as snow. Yeah, they were just sharing pictures with me before I went live, and and Kelly does have a lot more snow. She said her muck boots go up to her knees, and in the, some of the places where it's drifting, it's over her boots. So they have already gotten eight inches of snow, and we are just in the beginning of October, so it's really crazy. Uh, we've been 
saying it's going to be a really early winter and probably a harsh winter. So we are we are trying to be prepared, hence why we hope to fill our freezer tomorrow with um, with our elk. And yes, the potatoes were such a blessing. I am so, so excited. So excited. And these potatoes are good. What's really funny is he asked me what he could make for me to eat when I get here because he knows that my diet is so limited. And I'm like, a baked potato. <laughs> These potatoes are so good. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely excited and what's happening right now is they're actually um, harvesting them from the fields and uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the big trucks to be filled up so that my little truck can be filled up. I'm just excited though. So in a survival situation, if my truck does break down, I've got plenty of water, I've got my survival gear, I can start a fire, and all I need to do is cook a potato. I've got potatoes for, I could live forever on those potatoes. So anyway, that is my exciting news. My boy is in school, and he's off and running and into it, and uh, he did message me after that last night, and and he's he's... Normally when you ask Austin how something is, his common answer, and it's just a joke for us because it's usually how he responds, is it's good. Well, last night I got it was absolutely great. So that speaks volumes to me and my mom heart, and I'm just so excited for him. The other thing is with my truck not cooperating yesterday, it was very windy. I had a hard time. I was fighting the whole day on the highway because of the winds trying to keep it on the road we were traveling through pretty much what you would consider desert and I'd be counter you know steering so that I wasn't getting blown to the left and next thing you know the wind would switch and I'd have to reverse my angle of attack so it was windy and last night it it here it sounded like we were gonna end up in Kansas instead of the other way around so it was quite something but I believe that that was the enemy fighting us and and the problems with the truck I had problems on the way there but I didn't have really any problems on the way here so I really feel the enemy was fighting Austin getting to school and I really feel the way God has opened the doors that there's great purpose for him there not just in his learning but maybe that he can be a light to others so really really excited about that this is a small um, it looked big um, in in the videos and and the um, 3D uh, tour that's online, but it's really a very small campus, which is good for Austin. Um, less overwhelm, and like I said, he just he just suddenly got really comfortable and really fit in. So I am just celebrating. But I want to share some stuff with you guys. I don't know how long I can be on here. Good morning, Ken. I don't know how long I can be on here because I am waiting for the potato thing to line up so that my truck can get filled up with taters and I need to be involved in that. So I'm waiting for either a text message or Ben to show up. So um, I don't, I'm don't. i going to try to do this quickly so that I'm not holding them up and also not keeping you guys on and all of a sudden just disappearing. But I want to share some things. You guys know that last week we had this like major whirlwind. It was actually two weeks ago. We showed the house Friday. We got a verbal offer on Sunday. We were told on Wednesday that we would get a, a written offer after Friday and, and, and step back that Monday. We found out that Austin starts school on the 8th. So it was just like this whirlwind of happenings and it was very, very crazy. Um, when Austin found out his admission date, it was something that we've been anticipating and something that normally we would have jumped around, high-fived, woohooed, and been really excited about. And with everything that was transpiring and the speed that things were transpiring and the reality of how fast everything was happening, I was sitting on the couch, Austin plopped down next to me. He said, I got my admission date. It's the 8th of October and we both just sat there like dumbfounded because things were just moving so fast. Well, he's in school, but our offer fell through. And I wanted to talk about that today. Oh, hello, Survival Tech. Good morning, Charles. And yes, it's a major praise the Lord. Um, 
on so many levels. Uh, God is so good. God is so good to us. And that's why with all the transparency that I've been sharing with you, I feel it's important to share this with you also. You know, we get in these whirlwinds. We have these things that are so awesome and things are happening. And, and you know, for us um, and others, you know, you're stuck in this long period of wait. And, and there's no deliverance from this place. And it's a hard, hard place to be. And you're finally... Um, get to this place where all of a sudden you think things are shifting and you're being delivered from it and then all of a sudden the rug gets ripped out from under you. Now, let me step back. A couple weeks before that, the mountain man and I, Glenn and I, were, were both given the same message. Hebrews 6.15 was it, uh, the verse that God gave him that morning and it was with Abram and Sarah and it was the message to wait and to be patient. And I opened up my devotional for the day, and it was the exact same thing, same Bible verse. So we've been asking God to share with us mutually the same message so that we know that we are following His lead, His will, not our own. So we've been in the mindset of waiting, and then we had a showing on a Sunday after that, and it was kind of like a dumbfounded thing, like we we're like, well, why? Because <laughs> we're supposed to wait. And then this one came and they put the offer in and, and now there's no offer. There's nothing on the table. So right there for most people, discouragement will set in and, and, and you'll struggle. You know, um, because we are so strongly seeking God's will for us, um, I can't say that we weren't disappointed. But at the same time, we truly believe that God has a purpose for us, a plan for us, and he did tell us to wait. So, you know, when he said to wait, I think he was testing us. We went into wait mode. We didn't even question it. And and now, you know, he might be testing us again to see how we're going to react and are we going to, you know, stumble because this rug was ripped out from under us again. Heck no. But I will say this. This roller coaster ride of okay, one minute we're focusing on our preparedness for winter and our what we need to do where we are to to be ready for and to be prepared. And then next thing you know, it's flipped up again and we are focusing on packing what isn't packed and what we, we have left to move around and get things from our current location to our future building site and oh, it's just that part is the hardest part because when we're changing gears like that it's so difficult and and it's getting it's very tiring um so that was probably the hardest part and shelly says tis the season to hunker in there is a better offer out there Exactly, exactly. And this was really very promising, very fitting person. We were a little disappointed because um, he would have been a good fit there. And being that we would be building pretty close there, um, one of our concerns is that whoever purchases our place will be a good neighbor. So that's always important. Um, but I want to remind you guys, when life doesn't go the way you want it to, when you're when you're given lemons make lemonade don't let it that rug when it's ripped out from under you cause you to tumble cause you to fall cause you to head in the wrong direction stay strong stay on the path and trust you've got to trust and that's what I wanted to talk about today so I'm gonna read these things I felt that they were kind of pertinent to this um, they at least spoke to me this is uh, from the word for you today, and it says, Your time has come. And in Esther 4.14, it says, You have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Moses began his ministry when he was 80. Esther started hers as a teenage girl. And when she heard the words of Mordecai, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this, she could easily have said, Give me time to grow up, get married, have children, and fulfill my dreams before asking me to put my life on the line to save the Jewish people. But she didn't. She said, I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. 
Often what God does in you while you're waiting is more important than the thing you're waiting for. I'm going to reread that. I love that. Often what God does in you while you're waiting is more important than the thing you're waiting for. You know, he works in each of us. He builds us. I talk to you often about, you know, where I where where I've come from and and how I've gotten to this place of strong faith and why I share my faith on my sleeve and why I feel it pertains greatly to preparedness and and to our everyday lives. And I just feel that that is such an important statement because we are always growing, we are always being nurtured, we are always being built, we are always being directed, and and there's purpose in it. So sometimes you think you're ready, but God knows you're not. So he puts you into the school of faith. That's where you learn to listen to the teacher, the Holy Spirit. Study your lessons, pass the tests, and graduate so that God can use you. It's not a comfortable place to be, but God is more interested in your character than your comfort. I like that too. And our character is important. What our, what we feel inside is, I would say, more than likely what you're showing on the outside. And if you're broken on the inside, bitter on the inside, angry on the inside, those are the things that are going to sh come out. And through our trials, through our walk, God breaks away those things that are inside that need to go away. So that what we see on the outside is, is a strong character. Through these times, too, we become great warriors. And that's warriors in physical strength, mental strength, and spiritual strength. So... Missionary Nancy Cockerell writes, It was God's plan all along to bring you here to serve him by using your gifts to minister to others for such a time as this. He has given you the grace to reflect the love and character of Christ, Christ to be a light in a darkened world for such a time as this. You have a unique place of service in God's kingdom, touching lives as only you can do for such a time as this. So here's the question. Is God telling you today... Your time has come, and it ends by saying God is more interested in your character than your comfort. You know, so it is It is really true, good morning, Miss Diana, that when we are in these places of holding and these places of uncomfortableness, I always go back to James where it says that, you know, we are building our perseverance and that um, tough times should be a joy. You know, a couple of weeks ago, the mountain man and I both shared our, our thoughts on that. And he refers to that Bible verse as though you're putting up your finger and having it cut off and you're finding great joy in it. I just look at it so different, and I, maybe that's a woman's perspective, but it does give me joy to know that God is building me and has purpose in what he's running me through and taking me through that I can be of use to him moving forward and in a more wholesome way, maybe. So it's all how you look at things. It's all how you view things. And one thing I want to encourage you more than anything is to just hold tight to his word, to his promises, and no matter if you're going through a good time or not, seek him. No matter if you are tremendously blessed or or not, seek him. Because the more we seek him, the more full we are of him, the more he can use us, the more he can work in us, and and the better off we are. And I just can't express that enough. Like I said, it was certainly an upheaval for us. Um, and the wild pace has been insane. We are hoping now that the mountain boy is where he needs to be. And as soon as I'm home, that we can slow our pace back down because it wasn't very healthy. I do want to say this. Um, my health was very affected for the last month. I have not felt well. But as I shared with you last week, I did the saliva and hair analysis test, which was right on to my thinking of what I felt was going on in my body. 
I got my supplements by the grace of God. We sold something that enabled me to purchase the supplements I needed. I started taking those about three days ago, and I feel so good. I feel so good. And yesterday, it wore me out, and I was exhausted, but it would have done a lot more to me, I feel, that if I wasn't on these supplements. Um, I feel like they are definitely strengthening whatever was weak, and uh, that's huge, too. When you're going through a rough time, you got to focus on your health as well as your mental health and your spiritual health. Your physical health is important too. So, you know, when you're in a, a situation where you're you're up and down and all over the place and and uh, you've got lots of stress and you're you're forced to run at a very wild clip. Um, when you can because I know that there were times where I couldn't. The stuff that I had to do had to get done. It had to get done now or there would have been struggles. So now that I can slow down, I am. I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna take better care of myself because that's important too. So we gotta remember that when you're going through these chaotic times, it's important to focus on all aspects of you and to make sure that you are centered. But the biggest thing that's gonna keep you centered is the word, and I, I promise you that. I am experiencing that myself. Hey, good morning, Eddie. Glad to have you joining me. I haven't seen you in a while. Um, so it is extremely, extremely important that we know, and that's what I was sharing with the mountain boy. You know, when you are, I said to him, when you're in school and you are feeling disheveled, you are feeling off kilter, um, you're anxious.
parable of the sower jesus said some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown as soon as they hear it satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them ever notice how you can sit at home and watch a two-hour commercial packed movie without feeling restless or bored yet when the pastor's sermon exceeds 30 or 40 minutes you keep glancing at your watch and can't wait to get out of church <laughs> i'm sure i've i've been there i've done that um I'm fortunate now that to try that too. Okay, so hopefully I'm still on. I'm getting all kinds of connections and stuff coming up on my screen here. All right. Um, the other thing is number three, discuss it with others. God's word is like a seed that multiplies and grows when it's watered by conversation with others who share your faith. The Bible says those who fear the Lord talked with each other and the Lord listened and heard. That, and that's Malachi 3.16. And I think that's really important too. Having good people. how it influences and it's it's really crazy um, and I, I do believe that when you're when you're in that situation where you're in the world all the time you have all the influences all the time you don't realize it until you step away maybe go on vacation um, maybe go out for a weekend camping or something that you realize how much of a pull it has on you that both the mountain man and I are walking this out in a pretty unified way in that you know we're both like great well he's obviously got another plan here we go <laughs> and that's good and it's really good the other good thing is when we do go off kilter we don't go off kilter together we go off kilter where he might be down and I'm up or vice versa but we're able to help each other and keep ourselves out of <clears throat> and men, uh, I'm really very fortunate to have such tremendous prayer warriors that I can call upon. Yesterday when I was on the road and the truck was acting up, I knew that my first angle of attack was to get my friends involved and get them praying for me. My goal was to get there. I figured worst case scenario, I break down there. I'm at a facility that they're teaching kids how to work on diesel vehicles and on, on vehicles and on big equipments. 